Hi guys, this is Xiao Fan from Shanghai. Nice to see you here. Today I want to、uh, share with you guys about the details for what is MUVIS and how we build a vector similarity search engine for illustrated data processing. Okay, so feel free to give me comments or questions. Okay, so before we start, let me simply introduce our company and myself. So our company name is Zillis. We made this word, and it comes from、uh, the English word "zillion." So "zillion of zillion" it des describes the volume and web user cases for ultra data. So it's also a palindrome word. So we think it's pretty cool. So my name is Xiao Fan, and I have、uh, over seven years working experience, focused on building database and storage systems. So after graduation graduation from Cornell University, I worked for Oracle, Hadwig, and Alibaba cloud databases. Okay, so now I'm the partner of Zillis, and I work as the director director of engineering. Okay, so I'm now currently in charge of the development of Mule's project. Okay, so my talk is divided into four parts. So the first part we're gonna do、uh, discuss why vector search engine is next generation inf infrastructure for AI applications. Okay, so secondly,、uh, we'll review the motivation of Mule's and the key challenges it's facing. Okay, so for the third part, we go through the architecture of Mules and why we believe is it is cognitive. Okay, so last but not the least, we'll share you some real world cases、uh, where Mules is applied. Okay, so、uh, when we talk about the big data, the first thing that come into our mind is usually the data volume. Okay, but there's another trend.、Uh, data is becoming more unstructured. Okay, so we're seeing more and more ultra data,、uh, such as images, videos, social networks, and geospatial data. Okay, so according to IDC, eighty percent of our data will be unstructured, and most companies nowadays lack of ability to store, process, and retrieve unstructured data. Okay, so、uh, in the past few years, the concept of AI was very popular. So big data multiply AI will be the trend in the industry. To sum up, data change horizontally and vertically. Okay, so、uh, by saying horizontally, we're saying rich data types, and they are more and more diversified,、uh, and the subdivided -divide data types such as photos, videos, audios, molecules, and those data expression form looks very different. Okay, so we see many systems for a specific purpose, pretty much similar to the stage. Uh, where big data processing before Hadoop and Spark appears, okay. So the underlying system prefers things,、uh, things that are abstract and unified, like MapReduce. Okay. Thus, a general-purpose unstructured data platform is a strong demand, and there、uh, still exists a big gap between requirements and rely,、uh, re uh, re reality. Okay. So another. Angle is vertically,、uh, which is related to semantic understand of understanding of data. Okay, so information hiding behind unstructured data need to be explored. Unlike traditional database, which focus on term and pattern match. Okay, so unstructured data search focus on deep semantics. It is usually a similarity issue rather than an exact match. Okay, so the common way to represent uh, uh, sem semantics behind data is through embeddings. Which is generated from feature learning.、Okay. So neural network now has a strong compu、uh, computing power support, which can mine the semantic information hidden in the data and generate meaningful embeddings.、Okay. So even for same data set, embeddings could be totally different based on what information we are extracting.、Okay. So for example, a video is used can be either used as、um, object classification or anomaly detection. Okay, since、so、then the hypothesis will be totally different, and the different、uh, embeddings should be generated for different purposes. Okay, so a tap,、um, typical、uh, ultra data processing pipeline is shown above. Okay, so ultra data is stored in the systems like distributed file systems or object storage. Okay, models are trained through a neural network. Today there are many pre-trained models. Uh, which are evaluated well with a little bit fine tuning. 
Okay, so unshared data I inference into embedding vectors, uh, which pre uh, presents its uh, semantic, and it can be widely used for searching recommendation, advertisement, and many other scenarios by a proximity nearest neighbor search. Okay, so in this chapter, we're going to talk about the motivation of bu uh, building MIOS 2.0. So the journey of MIOS project is starting by uh, 2018. Okay, so by then we are involved in an image processing project, which where we need uh, to deliver uh, vector search uh, functionalities. Okay, we released MIOS uh, at 2019, since we believe it will have more people on processing structured data. Okay, so today MIOS is one of the most active projects in the Linux AI and Data Foundation. Okay. But during the experience of the last few years, we've seen a great gap between MIOS 1.0 and the user's demand. Okay, so in, in this chapter, we are going to share with you guys about what the challenges uh, we are facing and how we're going to solve. <coughs> okay, so the first challenge is uh, complex semantic. A typical use case for MIOS is a recommendation system in which user can retrieve data from a key value database, text search engine, or vector search engine. So uh, then they can rank from the retrieve result, uh, probably by other rules to improve uh, quality of recommendations. Okay. To implement such a system, you're going to cover all the uh, different fun uh, functionalities, okay, but it's not doable in one system. Okay. So the better way to do that is find a way to combine multiple databases and solve the data silo problem uh, by build some of the relationships, okay? So um, you also find a way to use log to connect all those data. We'll talk about this later. Okay. Second challenge of MIOS is a cost efficiency. Okay, so traditional databases uh, usually follow CAP series and users are first to pick uh, a side between consistency and availability, okay? Uh, there is a newer theory called PACELC. Uh, it, it's kind of an extension of CAP theory. It is said that um, uh, if there is a partition, then the system must be uh, balanced between availability and the consistency. Okay. So otherwise, if the system is so good, you're going to uh, strike a balance between latency and the consistency. Okay. So MIOS also follows PACELC. Uh, and we find most of the MIOS users, they were more focused on the availability and latency issues rather than consistency. That's why it offers a tunable consistency for our users. So users can pick one uh, of the consistence, uh, probably between strong consistency, uh, consistent prefix session consistency, and probably st stale boundness. Okay. Another interesting part uh, is we find another CEP theory uh, in MIOS, because there is uh, always a trade-off between cost, accuracy, and performance. Okay, so what we do is we integrated multiple index tabs in the system to fulfill uh, accuracy performance requirement for different scenarios. Okay, so before the birth of MIOS, data engineers used lab libraries such as FAST or HNSW to support vector search. There are certain challenges of applying these libraries into production. Okay, first of all, how to uh, do data sharding and load balancing. Okay, so with the growing of uh, unshared data, user can not hold the millions of uh, billions of embeddings in, in memory, and thus it cannot be a single machine solution. Okay, secondly, uh, data deleted, updated in the demand for. Uh, uh, online ap applications. Okay, so for traditional uh, vector library, you really cannot support or not efficient enough for the CIUD operations. Okay, also durability and availability is a big issue for using those libraries directly. User has to handle uh, persistence logic by themselves. Okay, so generally speaking, uh, first versus MIOS is similar to Lucent versus Elasticsearch. MIOS, make it, uh, MIOS is first to make embedding search easier and more scalable. Okay. 
so after we do open source for many years, we find that the lifeline of uh, infrastructure software is iteration speed. Okay. Uh, the first thing we do is we convert from uh, incremental design into uh, iterative development. So user can always get first-hand functionalities. Uh, they can use it, test it, and give a lot of comments and advice. Then we can decide how we to uh, how we can improvement. Do the improvement. Okay. So another key strategy here is how we handle system complexity. Okay. So we loosely decouple everything through a log pop subsystem. Thus, each developer can hold a smaller part of the system. Okay. We also did a great job on abstraction and layering. So then we can rely on some major systems such as Kubernetes and etcd to solve problems that is not a key contribution of MUIS. Also, open source is another strategy for us to accelerate uh, evolution. Okay. Open source brings us great scenarios and as well as many great programmers who are willing to share. Okay. Uh, we believe that Bazaar will finally beat Castillo uh, because we have more evolution speed. So if you're interested in MUIS, please join us and we can build this faster. So to solve all these challenges, we started the MIOS 2.0 project uh, on last September. Okay, so MIOS 2.0 design is inspired by L the classic, uh, classic designs such as LSM tree, Lambda architecture. And we also learn a lot from the other popular databases and data warehouses such as Elasticsearch and Snowflake. Okay. So the first question is, what is MIOS? Okay, so first of all, MIOS is a database. The original intention of the project is to solve how to maintain meta information and how to do CRUD operations on vector data. Okay, so recently, MIOS is also listed on DB rank at the position of 285. Okay, so the problem MIOS is uh, trying to solve is uh, proximity nearest, nearest neighbor search. Okay, MIOS help users to build index on both vector and scalar data for uh, fast retrieving. So MIOS is a distributed system. It is highly scalable and robust. Uh, MIOS is uh, built on Kubernetes. Uh, we believe it is, it is a cognitive design with a ver a very good elasticity. Okay. So the goal of MIOS is to build a system uh, like Tesla. You can run it for your daily transportation and you can also like require for the performance uh, on your demand. Okay. So last but not the least, MUIS is uh, open sourced. Okay, so it's now the world's most popular database on GitHub. Okay. The other question is what what MUIS is not. Okay, so first of all, MUIS is not a relation database. We don't have a plan to support ACID or uh, SQL yet. And on the most cases, MUIS is doing uh, proximity queries. Secondly, MIOS is not aimed to rep uh, replace Elasticsearch. Okay, so the oh sorry, so the data type and also the uh, operations is different. So for e for Elasticsearch, uh, they're doing term search on text data, while MIOS is running on semantic search on embeddings. Okay, so we insist that log is a self distributed system, and log is our need to build a distributed system. So the uh, theoretic base, uh, basis is that if you have two identical deterministic process beginning in the same state and it, they get the same inputs in the same order, they will produce the same output and end in the same state. Okay. By talking about deterministic, it means that the processing is not time independent and does, doesn't let any other out of band input influence its results. So, for example, if a program whose output is influenced by a particular order of execution of threads or by a call named get time of, uh, of the day or some other non-repeatable things, uh, it, it's generally to be considered as non-deterministic. Okay. So, for the uh, state of the process, uh, it is whatever data remains on the machine, either in the memory or on disk. 
so after the processing, we believe that uh, uh, state will always be the same if, if you replay from logs. Okay. So traditional state machine replication, such as Raft, is a good example of either shit log based, how log based system could work works well. Okay. Uh, we have another way to uh, think about this. Okay. So table and log are just uh, uh, the two sides of uh, the, your data. Okay. So table represents the uh, bounded data while log is unbounded. Okay. We can convert, uh, convert log into table by windowing logs per time tick. Okay. Then the challenge part is how we're going to persist all the logs. Okay. Uh, we see many uh, popular systems. Uh, AWS Aurora, they use uh, uh, self view distributed storage, uh, which implement the current protocol. Okay. For Apache HBase, uh, they just simply rely on HDFS to do the data pipeline. Okay. For uh, Kakash DBs and uh, TI DBs, uh, those new SQL systems use a raft Paxas implementation to uh, fulfill the uh, log consensus protocol. Okay, so Milwaukee has just chosen a new way where we rely on the log pop up system to store logs. Okay, so the advantage of uh, using a log pop up system is uh, first of all, we're decoupling log and servers ensures that Mules itself it has no state, make failure recovery easy and fast. Okay. So secondly, Logstar ensures data durability. Uh, they do the replication themselves, so make sure data is replicated. Uh, thirdly, the introduction of uh, log pop sub system makes the system more extensible. Okay, so Mules can integrate with more system in the future, uh, such as uh, Elasticsearch, GeoMesa and the InfluxDB for different data types. They can all be like just another log subscribers. Okay. To reduce the uh, system complexity, uh, the complexity is a big enemy of uh, distributed systems. Okay, so we use log to, uh, to do the loosely decoupling. And thus we can, uh, each, each developer can only focus on one part of the system and it's going to reduce the uh, uh, system complexity. Uh, uh, we, we, we pick Kafka and Pulsa as our log pub systems uh, because they are mature and also they implement most of the features we want. The log based uh, design makes the system uh, extendable. Uh, the users can transfer their raw data into different format and ingest, uh, ingested those data in, uh, by batch or by uh, streaming. Okay, so typically we can, we will try to handle three types of data, the embedding vectors, the semi structure text data, and all those relational models. Okay, uh, we call this uh, architecture the bazaar architecture because it, it supports multiple execution engines and all those different engines just consume data from the log broker independently. So when query comes in, uh, the query processor is responsible for uh, parse the uh, query and generate uh, logical and physical plans and schedule executions. Okay. Uh, once uh, all the execution is done, we have a uniform reducer which reduces all the data and do the rank. So log-based system seems to be uh, beautiful, but we, we are still facing many challenges. Uh, first of all, merely re relies on playback of the logs is impractical. Uh, we find that it's just too slow in most cases. So also the, the, the amount of data to be replayed back after each failure recovery is too large. Okay, so we implemented a background task consuming streaming data and package it into log snapshot. So the log snapshot is also called sale segment in Mules. After a segment grows big, we sell it, we persist it on the object storage and we build a scalar index and a vector index in the background. So in the read pass, we implement a typical MPB architecture. So each segment search is done in parallel, uh, proxy aggregate uh, all the local result and returns to the user. 
As a cognitive database, MIOS follows the rules of microservice design. Uh, the first thing we do is we uh, disaggregate uh, storage and computation. Uh, this could help us to make the system elastic and we can do shrink and expand the cluster in seconds by the help of Kubernetes. Okay. We also separate compute, uh, computing intensive, memory intensive and IO intensive tasks. Okay. So uh, uh, when you do uh, expand shrink clusters, you can do it independently. It helps us to better cope with different workload scenarios. Okay, so if you have uh, write intensive tasks, you can simply uh, sh expand your data node. And if you do read only um, workload, you, uh, you probably need only zero or one data node and most of your resources will be on query. Okay, so it also reduce the uh, impact of failure uh, and reduce the recovery time. Okay, because many of the uh, nodes are not on the critical path for embedding retrieval. So uh, once we improve the monitoring and tracking system, okay, so the macro uh, service design also makes the troubleshooting and debugging easier. Okay. Uh, an another thing to uh, mention is that we separate uh, control panel and um, computing plane. Okay, so this gives uh, Mules the ability to deploy across cloud and across data center. So finally, the whole architecture of MIOS comes into the big, big picture. Okay, so we think that MIOS is advanced design in line with the concept of cognitive, okay, which helps us to achieve better elasticity and availability. Okay. So the whole system takes log as a backbone. Computation and storage is totally disaggregated. And we also unified stream and batch ingestion uh, by a well-designed timestamp scheme. A mix great uh, abstractions of uh, meta storage, method storage, and uh, object storage. So uh, every dependency is just a plugin. Okay. For instance, if method storage can be uh, stored either by Pulsar or Kafka, and the browser can be implemented by S3 men menu and JuiceFS. Probably more. Okay. So uh, in MailOS, we have a component called Query Node. So it is responsible to receive and respond all requests from user applications. Uh, it just that that has uh, first ingested into log brokers, uh, then consuming memory as a growing segment. So the growing segment is able to query, but uh, probably not efficient. So once the size of growing segment reaches a predefined threshold, we set it to the immutable and flush it to uh, the persistent storage named uh, silk segment. Okay, so. Uh, We'll build a different index on the cell segment to make uh, embedding retrieval faster. Okay. We also perform periodically data compaction uh, to merge small segments into a large segments. Okay. If we take a closer look at uh, each segment, we'll see that each data entry may contain one vector uh, fields and multiple attribute fields. Okay, so the attribute fields uh, here is refers to uh, traditional structured data. Okay, so both vectors and attributes are stored in a column manner fashion. With data in the same field, uh, they start together. So it's uh, we can make uh, our scan faster. Okay. So uh, if segments reach a predefined uh, size, we'll stop merging them and building index on, uh, in them to facilitate uh, searching. Uh, we support in multiple vector index types, including encoding-based in uh, index, graph-based index, and tree-based index. Uh, for the data query requests, uh, they are directed to those uh, query nodes. We implement all the search logic and their corresponding optimization in, in, in query node. Okay. So most of the search algorithm are implemented in, uh, in a in-memory in fashion. It is both uh, computa uh, computation-intensive and memory-intensive tasks. So uh, in the last chapter, we're gonna do talk about some real world cases for um, MIOS. Okay, so uh, first of all, our goal is to uh, deliver a standard in open source uh, software for vector similarity search. Okay, so through all these feedbacks and continuous improvement, we are striving to make MIOS the best uh, and we get our, uh, more than 1000 MIOS users. So the first example is uh, image reverse search. 
So the example is from a big data company. They have uh, collected a lot of uh, corporate, uh, corporate uh, credit data, including uh, 55 million trademarks. Okay. So they want to provide the, their members the functionality to search uh, companies through their tre uh, trademark images. So what they do is build an image search function upon a fine-tuned VGG model and mills. Since nobody knows how many people it's going to be their new members, uh, the uh, the cost becomes very critical and sensitive. Okay, so they're happy with the performance mill is provided, and we can search among fifty-five million images in less than twenty seconds on a GPU server. Okay, uh, chatbot is another application. Uh, it solves the, the user's questions and find, find the nearest uh, top K related answers. Okay. The whole process is mainly divided into two stages, um, recall and ranking. So in the rank, recall stage, we use two ways to recall, namely keyword, uh, keyword recall and vector recall. Okay. So before the recall, we store the questions keyword into Elasticsearch and embedding into Mules. Okay. So the keyword recall analysis the user's input questions and directly retrieve exactly match questions and also pairs from Elasticsearch. search. Okay. So vector recall encoded questions by an encoder to get a um, questions vector present, uh, representation. And uh, then we retrieve the answer in MILS to return a semantic similar uh, query answers. Uh, the output of the recall stage will be used at the input of the sorting st stage. And the final sorting result uh, of the re uh, recall text is determined according to the scoring of the sorting model. Okay. Uh, MILS is also widely used in recommendation system. Uh, Xiaomi uses uh, MILS as uh, mobile news recommendations. Okay, They use Sim Simbird as a uh, uh, as a model to create embeddings based on uh, users' daily page views and clicks, uh, click reads. Okay. Uh, they use it mules to pull out the latest matching articles for every day. Okay. So uh, in the previous two examples, AI technology is not creating core value of the whole application. So they're more, like, uh, more likely to be a uh, value add Okay, but in the last example, uh, we offer this uh, efficient vector similar search to deliver the core business value. So is, this is a pharmaceutical uh, users. Okay, so we first translate each molecule expression into a 1000 bits long binary string data. Okay, so those vectors are stored in the MUS servers and they could perform uh, tiny multiple uh, similarity analysis and the sub substructure sim uh, analysis and the superstructure analysis. Okay. So previously they're using a spark cluster to perform this kind of uh, analysis. It will take around four, 14 seconds. It will take around 14 seconds uh, on uh, 30 million molecules. Okay. But with MULES, you can now analyze over 800 million molecules within 500 milliseconds on a single server. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for attending. If you're interested in MULES project and you have any questions uh, or you want to know details about uh, MULES implementations, feel free. Uh, to see our website at mills.io or join our community from uh, GitHub and um, Slack. Okay. Uh, Mills 2.0 is already released and we're going to release the um, stable version uh, by the end of August. Any contribution to uh, this uh, community is warmly welcome. Okay. See you guys. That's it for today.